When did you start building a community around your stand-up comedy? It's mostly my husband who does most of the community work, and I help him in the operational sense. He's also a stand-up comedian. He is also a stand-up comedian. How we do it as a couple is that we have regular open mics where the community itself, when they actually perform at our club, invite more people. Really, the best way is word of mouth. Because the people who play at your club are the best people to give an honest review of whether they will like it or won't like it, and they will perpetuate the PR by itself without us even doing too much. So we do host regular workshops. We do have a lot of open mics that brings their friends in and see their improvements. Obviously, we do the regular type of promotions, which is PR on social media, YouTube, magazines, newspapers, all that. And that's where your marketing expertise come in. Yeah, that's where I definitely say I contribute a lot because I do understand branding. To keep that brand consistency in every show is a must. It goes down to the finest details of how loud do you want the microphone to be. The music that you play at the club has to reflect us as a brand character, and that's what I think a lot of other clubs don't take that into consideration. And that is why the comedy club Bangkok is still at number one. Yeah, I think branding is really important, and it's interesting that you mentioned branding in something that you don't normally think about branding. Because I'm a designer, right? and I do think about branding a lot, and it's really common for companies, but a community. Where people gather, you don't really think about branding, but I think it's important to have a brand and to have core values that represent the community, so that people come and kind of know what you are about. But how do you accomplish that with a club where you have random people coming in for an open mic night, and you have a lot of performers on the show that aren't just you and your husband? Right. We do have a team. And our team knows our core values and what the brand represents and everything. But the performers themselves, they don't necessarily have to know. These comedians, they play everywhere. They don't just play exclusively for our club. So there's no point in inundating them with information of who we are because they probably don't care. To be honest, branding is more on our side in terms of promotion, like what writing style we have, our brand logo, what it looks like. We have a chili logo, and that reflects our spiciness. Stuff like that, yeah. What would you say is the brand and the core values of your club? We position ourselves to be Bangkok's only dedicated English language comedy venue that holds shows every Friday, no matter what happens. Now that there's more competition, we want to be on top. We want to be number one. The qualities of the headliners that we import. Ask them to come to perform at our club are at a much higher level than the other clubs. We make sure that the quality that the audience will get will be of an international standard, and that's how we differentiate from other clubs. Whereas other clubs, not that it's a bad thing, it's a completely different market for them. So they only focus on open mics, for example, or they do headliner shows, but they use the local talent. Has there ever been anyone who you have to kick out of the club, like they're really racist, for example? No, we are very fortunate that so far our expat community or the performers themselves are very nice. Most of the stand-ups here are are nice in general, and yeah, nobody had to be kicked out. But there are a couple of house rules that we do have to keep in check. Like we do have to tell them to not talk about certain topics, especially in Thailand. There are certain topics that you have to respect in terms of culture, or tradition, or whatever. And we just lay that for them, and everybody just respects it. So that's awesome. It's a mutual respect towards one another. They want to do shows at our shows because they know that when they go up on our shows, they will have a good full house audience. And so they don't want to do anything that jeopardizes their second chance because they would probably know that if they did something that we didn't like, we would probably ban them. Naturally, it's yeah, it's just mutual respect.